What if I told you that this is actually an awful lot like this? And that if you're new to carpentry and woodworking, I think the fastest way to understand the quirks of wood is to simply observe the nature of celery. I've talked about this before in my rip versus crosscut video, but that one didn't get a ton of views and I thought I should really revisit the subject. So today I'm revealing the hidden similarities between celery and wood. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. When I see newcomers struggling with concepts in carpentry and woodworking, I often realize that what they're actually struggling with is the nature of wood itself. When their cuts go bad or when their projects break or become unstable, in many cases, they've simply failed to understand the material that they're working with. They overestimate its strength, they ignore its flaws, and they ask it to do things that it really doesn't want to do. I'll admit it takes a while to get that ingrained sense of how wood will behave in a project. You can spend a lifetime studying it, but I seriously think that one of the easiest ways to understand the rudiments of working with wood is to simply compare it to celery. Celery is not intimidating. Most people are familiar with cutting and handling it, which is what makes it such an easy entry point for understanding wood. So what do these two seemingly unrelated plants have in common? The biggest thing really is cellular structure. As I said in the rip versus crosscut video, wood has a longitudinal grain. You can see this on the face of a milled board. Grain patterns display as long lines extending from one end of the board to the other. This is because trees grow in this linear fashion, projecting upwards from the ground. And unlike the clumpy shape of human cells, tree cells are actually shaped more like long bundles of tubes or straws. These tubular cell groups, known as xylem, transport water and nutrients from the roots up through the trunk and into the leaves. Celery is much the same. It contains way more water overall, but it too has long tube-like cells, a xylem and phloem, that also give it an appearance of linear grain. So celery is just a little tree. And that's really cool, but why is it significant? It's because that longitudinal grain, which exists for transporting water and nutrients, also drastically affects how both materials respond to stress, especially the stress of cutting or breaking. The easiest way to cut both wood and celery is with the grain. In other words, passing a saw or blade through it parallel to the grain structure. In carpentry, we call this type of cut a rip. Any new carpenter or woodworker can tell you that rip cuts just feel easier. You feel less resistance on the saw blade when you rip. The cuts naturally come out cleaner and they don't present quite as much tear out or shredded fiber on the face. But if you wanna see why this occurs close up, just try breaking a piece of celery lengthwise. Get a long section with square ends, pinch the two lobes, and spread them away from each other. The stalk will split without a lot of effort, if unevenly. And you can do this even more cleanly by scoring a line down the center first. This is because we're just splitting the bundled tubes apart. You're exploiting natural divisions in the material. In ripping wood is much the same. The linear grain produces far less resistance to the blade passing through it because you're only having to break up one line of grain or one localized bunch of cells. This is also why it's super easy to split logs from the top. With a sharp axe, nearly anyone can get the hang of busting up logs. You're just using force and a sharp edge to part the linear fibers. And this often works to our advantage as woodworkers. But the weakness in this dimension also creates problems when you build things out of wood. And this is where I tend to see new DIYers get things wrong because they may not acknowledge or perhaps even be aware of this weakness. For instance, new DIYers may create structures with really big overhangs along the grain, like this. That's a big cantilever, and cantilevers need to be really strong to maintain support. But hanging out longitudinal grain like this is a bad idea because it's very prone to fracturing. All of that extended weight is relying on a couple grain lines for support, but those linear fibers will separate under nominal weight or force usually right near the supplied fulcrum. This is why the front edge of deck stairs are so prone to breaking off. I replaced numerous deck treads over the years because the treads are often extended too far over the riser below. They're unsupported along the linear grain at the edge. Over time, they'll take on a bowed sort of appearance, especially as they dry out. Then eventually the front lip might just snap right off. And that's why I also showed in my deck stair repair video that I often won't even unscrew treads to remove them. I'll just split the wood along the grain because it comes apart so easily this way and you can remove it in sections. Short pieces are even worse about this. Often a single nail in them can cause them to split, especially if it's treated lumber that has dried out too quickly. 
and thin cross sections of wood are really prone to snapping. They're so brittle you can often break them with your fingers, just like you could a wedge of celery. Cut a little sliver and you can break it in half with the gentlest force. So that's where both wood and celery are weaker, with the grain. But if you want to see where they're both extremely strong, just turn them 90 degrees and apply force. By presenting stress across the grain, or perpendicular to it, you reveal the hidden strength of this cellular structure. Because that point force is no longer acting on one linear bundle of cells. Instead, it's acting on all the cells across the width of the piece. Celery will bend when force is applied this way. It won't break easily like before, because it actually has a lot of elasticity and toughness. And even when it does finally break, it won't do so cleanly. It actually tends to shred because some individual fiber groups break, but others hold strong. You have to apply a lot of force to finally tear it, and you wind up with a mess. Even cutting it across the grain requires a sharper blade and careful attention to make sure every fiber is parted, otherwise the celery puts up a fight. Wood is exactly the same. Severing wood across the grain is known as cross-cutting, and it's more difficult overall. Saws struggle more to make the cut. Motors face more resistance because they're now having to sever every single little connection in the wood from one side to the other. And you have to use very sharp blades to make cross cuts and make the cut very slowly. Because if you use a dull blade or make the cut too fast, the teeth of the blade will shred through the wood and you'll get lots of tear out. Again, each individual saw tooth is responsible for attacking a new layer of cell fibers. And if you go too fast, you won't actually cut those fibers, you'll just rip them apart. Your cut will look extremely ragged, like a stalk of celery you broke in half. So, cross-cutting and shaping wood across the grain is harder. You need to go much more slowly and use very sharp tools. But as I said, this resistance to separating across the grain also makes wood much stronger in this dimension. And if you really want to get the maximum strength this way, you can turn any board off its flat dimension up onto its wider edge. Now you can produce real strength over a span because you're stacking up layers of cross grain all bonded together, each one supported by and supporting the one below it. This is how whole structures are built, and I'll talk much more about it in the future. But that's the power of this linear cell structure, and it's all pretty well illustrated by our pal Celery, the little tree that you can eat. Now, eventually, the celery metaphor breaks down. For instance, wood warps under certain conditions. I actually did a whole video on why and how it warps, so check that one out, because it's actually an interesting topic. But I'm not sure if celery warps because I never keep it around long enough to find out. Also, in the US, we build lots of structures using narrow wood pieces, studs, as vertical supports because wood has great rigidity in this dimension. But celery, I'm afraid, is probably a little too flimsy for use in building elevated structures. Celery does, however, go great with peanut butter, whereas wood requires lots of peanut butter to become even slightly palatable. But that's my food carpentry lesson for the week. I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments. And I'll link some good tools for DIYers and woodworkers down in the description in case you're looking to expand your tool collection a bit. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.